Okay, um, today I have an ASA Twin 6000 with um, gin spools that Georgia Jim sent me. And I figure I'll pick this and I might as well do at the same time this uh, ASA Twin combi that I have. Um, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use my fingernail for tension today. And um, I'm going to pick it with this toothpick here. And we'll see how that goes. Um, should be easy. Hold on. What is that? Let me see if I can show you guys what I just spotted. Over here, I think we have one of these mythical locks in the wild. Actually, let's get out there. Let's see what that is. Uh, all right. Sorry, my my area out here is a bit of a mess clean it but look right there look at that thing it's a oh not this guy here that's a little toad but look at that it's one of those locks in the wild wow okay I, I hear people talking about these things all the time but I never thought I'd actually see one um, what can we do with this Give you a little bit of tripod here so that we're not all shaky cam the whole time. Extend out this tripod. Get a bit of shaky cam while I do it. Okay. Almost there. Sorry. Did not expect to run into this thing today. I mean, whoever does. But I'm wondering if we could pick this guy. Instead, it'd be more of a challenge than those asses in there. So, let's try. Oh, well, he's pretty docile. He lets me touch him. And I can pick him up, too. All right. So, let's grab him. And let's try to pick... Oh, my gosh. He doesn't seem to like that pick at all. Um, I'm going to have to think of something else. You know what? Maybe he'll eat this. Let's see if he likes it. Oh, oh yeah, he likes the key. Okay. Oh, but it won't open for me. I wonder what we can do. You know what? Let's see if this guy will let us impression a key off of him. Hmm. Looks like he's not going anywhere. Let me go ahead and uh, get some tools. I'll move over to somewhere to sit, and. Uh, and I'll be back and we'll try to uh, impression him. Well, let's see. Do we need a five or six pin key? It looks like this six pin SC4, oh, the toad just jumped away, is uh, too long. So I'm guessing I'll be back with a, a five pin and, and we'll give him a whirl. Okay, so let's go. All right, so I've moved somewhere a little bit more comfortable. Got myself a little shade. Um, this will be a longer video. Uh, I'm gonna probably do cutaways as I take breaks to feed the kids and different things. Um, but what you're gonna want to do is um, get yourself a key blank, uh, the correct um, number of pins and the correct keyway, obviously. So this is a SC1 key. The other one I showed you was SC4, the longer version of the key. And I've gone ahead and I've pre-marked this key with where I'm gonna be doing my filing. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. One is if you have a plug, you can stick this in an empty plug and put your Sharpie down and mark where all the holes are. That's what I did here. Um, if you don't have one of those, regardless, you should grab yourself one of these um, for whatever for whatever key you're dealing with. This is from lockreference.com. And this gives you your uh, spacing here, which is gonna tell you how far from the bow each uh, pin is okay another super useful thing is the root depths this is going to tell you how high up from the bottom of the key those partic particular pinnings go um, and that can help you cut down a lot on the amount of times you are in impressioning the key uh, we're, we're going to assume that this lock is got standard pins they're not done anything custom or crazy and that uh, that um, 
it, that it's not particularly worn away, you know, and conforming to a specific key. And you can get yourself one of these, uh, I forget what these are called, but they'll, they'll show you the, the bidding of your key. And um, with this, that way, if you see a, a mark on a key, and I'll tell you how to look for that and stuff like that, uh, you can go ahead and file your way down to the next depth level um, rather than, you know, doing two little filings and going to the next. That's what I'm going to do today. If you're truly doing an unknown lock and you don't know what it is, you might go and do like two filings, test it, do two filings, test it, and do that maybe, you know, 100 or 200 times to get the key. And that's what I did uh, previously, so this time I guess I'm trying a little bit different to make the process not take quite so long. Um, if you don't have one of those gauges, calipers uh, are, you know, these things you absolutely want uh, in general. A good set that can show you down to, um, okay, uh, you, a set that can actually turn on would be a, a good start. So let me go ahead and uh, pop the battery in and out. There we go. Um, and it can give you down to a uh, pretty precise measurement. We're going to need inches for this. Zero it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to go ahead and prepare this key with a little groove on each spot so that my file can rest in it. Not only that, I'm going to I'm going to drop all these down to at least a zero cut, okay? Because right now we're at uh, 344 thousandths. Is that right? Yeah, 344 thousandths. And a zero cut is 335. So I'm going to drop all of them down to 335 because that's going to be the maximum height that any of the pins can be. Anyways, I'll be right back after I do that. So for this, um, today I'm going to use two files. Uh, I have um, a Pippins file, uh, which has a really interesting shape. I you can start your cuts with the sharp side just to get a little groove and then the other side makes a nice shape for the uh, for the key and then I have a flat file and this is just to take down the uh, the, the peaks so that they're not so rough on the key you're gonna end up with a really curved key otherwise and uh, the, the pins will not be able to travel up and down so you're gonna want to file down those valleys uh, the, the peaks with the uh, with the flat file um, if you don't have a, a Pippin's file um, I've done, I did most of my initial impressions just using a jeweler's round file I got, um, you know, in a, in a big pack of files for like 10 bucks from China. Uh, and those work just fine. This one um, just makes it a little prettier. Another thing you're going to want is some sandpaper um, because uh, you can go ahead and you can f like sand down your cuts if you're having a hard time seeing where your impression is at. Um, this will help you detect. Um, where those impressions are a little bit better if you if you have the the surface nicely sanded down. Um, I drew my lines all the way down sides because as I file, I'm going to want to try to stay uh, on that line and not be going crooked, right? Uh, so to start, what you're going to do is you're going to catch your little wild guy here and uh, stick your key in his mouth. You're going to uh, uh, so I don't know if I mentioned this impressioning tool. Um, this is the first time I'm going to use this tool. I've always just used uh, those vice grips in the past, and those worked. I the first time I tried it, I broke the key at uh, at the bow. Um, so you want to be a little bit careful with your side to side um, kind of uh, pressure. You want to make sure you're doing rotational pressure, and not really side to side. And the second time I well, when I can with my second key, I, I broke a file. So you don't need a lot of pressure with your file. It's just little light passes. Um, but I think that file was really worn down and really cheap. So uh, anyways, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn with quite a bit of uh, rotational force to like, let's say the right, and you're gonna wiggle up and down like this. And I see that lock is wiggling in there, so I might have to wiggle more than I usually would. And then you're gonna go to the left and you're gonna wiggle up and down. Like this is, this might be easier in a vise, but yeah. Why well, make things easy, right? Okay, once we do that, we're gonna take this out, and uh, at this point, you're gonna be looking for a little scratch mark. Um, I use a little uh, magnifying glass like this to look for it. Um, so I'll look at that real quick right here, 
and see if I can see a mark. If I don't see a mark, then you want to go ahead and um, uh, stick it in there again and do it again. Um, and it can take a... Alright, so I see a, a mark on one, two, three, four. Um, see, sometimes you'll see more than one, but I just see it on number four. So you would give number four like two passes with this. Before I do this, I'm going to uh, take a, a macro shot of that to show you guys. But um, do like two passes with this and then do it again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it passes until I get down to a one cut because it's right now at a zero cut. And then uh, that way it'll speed up the process a lot. So let me get out the um, uh, a different view, macro view, and I'll try to mix this in as well. So it's going to be a interesting edit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and try to see if we can see that mark on number four. Um, I'm viewing it through a little small viewfinder, so hopefully... I'm doing shaky cam too. Hopefully we can see that. If you can't, uh, what we're looking for is a little kind of just round mark on there. Um, I can actually see it here without my lens on that fourth, without my uh, uh, magnifier on that fourth pin. Uh, I really don't know if you'll be able to see it, but maybe you'll just have to trust me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the file and we'll give it some passes on that number four there. So this guy here that I saw the mark on. And two passes on that. Let's see what it dropped us down. It dropped us down to... Okay, it dropped us down by about 40 thousandths of an inch in just two passes. Um, so already with that, I've probably taken off more than I should have, okay? Uh, because my next... Is that right? No, that's okay. Let's see. So, the zero cut is... Uh, 335 thousandths of an inch. Man, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting this angle. So let me just look at it. Okay, so I got it down to 328 thousandths. And 335 is your uh, zero cut. So 328 is what I'm at. 320 is, 320 is the one cut. So I got down to 328 with just two passes from 335. So it's like 55 that I took off with two passes. So I have to be careful because um, I only want to get out down to 320. So I want like uh, 80 thousandths more and I just got rid of 50. So let's go ahead and just do two little, this time I did lighter passes. I just want to make sure. And you know, measure twice, cut once, right? Okay, so I'm at 328 still. So let's go ahead, one, two passes with that. I am at 324, and I want to get down to three, 320, okay. Now again, you would just be sticking it back in over and over and over again, but I'm doing kind of a faster method. All right, so I'm down to 320, so what I'm going to do is stick it back in his mouth, give it some rotation, bagel up and down, rotation the other way, and you, you want to have it in straight before you put the, the force on so that all the pins are just kind of resting there. And what's going on is that when you turn it, um, you're binding that one pin, just like when you're picking the lock, right? You're binding that pin. In this case, since you're turning it with so much, so much force, you're sometimes binding multiple pins. And that pin won't move and as you wiggle it like this that one pin is rubbing on that spot whereas the other ones are just spring bound they're just bouncing up and down on there so they're not leaving any mark but that one binding pin is rubbing on the brass here and it's leaving an impression that might be why they call it impressioning right uh so let me go ahead and grab my uh lens again and take a look and see what i see okay you a lot of times you have to rotate it a lot in the light, right? Um, trying to see that mark can be very, very tricky. Um, especially because I don't have it in a vise or a door. 
So I'm relying completely on my hand. Alright, I see a little... I, I want to say I see a little mark on one, but I'm not confident right here. So what I'm going to do is stick it back in again. Give it a lot more force. You can kind of go in and out too while you're going up and down. Whatever, whatever it takes to get that little mark on that, that spot. Uh, and then we'll take a look again. Um... See what I got. All right, I got a mark on the outer edge of four for sure. So that's the one I just filed down. So four is deeper. I got a mark on five. Uh, and I don't think that was a mark on one. I think that's just the file pattern. So you got to be careful of that. There might be a mark on three, but it's very faint. Um, I'll try to do the macro shot again. I don't know how well that turned out before. Maybe if I leave the thing sitting here. Okay. Let's see if I can focus. Alright, so what I'm looking for is I see a mark on three and four right there. And alright, let's take off the let's go ahead and go to make a photo. Um, maybe that'll turn out better. Or not. It wants to focus on the deck. Very shallow depth of field here. Okay. Alright, that's not going to happen. Let's go ahead and continue. So I saw a mark on 4 and 5, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take those down. Um, I guess. So you see me take it out of the, the camera because I'm, I'm putting on my knee. That's usually where I file my, my key, but then I remember that I, that I have a camera. So let's go ahead and give number five. Okay, five, I seem to be a bit off. So I need to get my file to go writing more to the right. Or in this case, up. And you wouldn't normally be making this many passes. Because look, that's already taken a sizable chunk off that key. Alright, so uh, cut number two is 305 that I want to look for it with number four. Okay, I'm uh, not there yet. And number pin five, I want, I'm looking for 320. I'm at 322, so let's take that down a little bit. One more pass there. This number four is a little bit off. All right, so pin four, I'm again looking for 305. I'm at 307. And pin five, I'm looking at 320. So I'm there on pin five. One more little pass on number four. So you can adjust the amount of pressure that you're putting on there to take off different amounts, obviously. I'm at 306. Close, let's take it down just a little bit more. Oh yeah, lovely noise. And we are 305 on the dot, okay, good. So let's go back. And you could use sandpaper in between if you're having trouble seeing impressions from the file marks. These uh, files, these Pippins files, they're, they're pretty high quality. They don't leave much in the way of markation. So I don't have much to battle with there. Okay, so let's look at this again. It's getting hot out here. Um, we have A difficult time seeing. A lot of sunlight. Where do we got a mark? Okay, I see a mark on three. That one that I thought was really faint before is becoming more distinct. And I see a mark on five. I don't see a mark on four this time. So I'll do three and five. Generally, you're going to want to be pretty confident where your marks are because you can always. You can always take more away, but you can never add. So if you're not sure there's a mark there, just re-impression it, right? But go ahead and take away from three. And normally two passes is enough, okay? But I'm doing four because I know I need to get down to the next depth. Okay, so um, pin five, I want to get down to uh, 305. 
I'm gonna, I, I should, okay, so I'm down there already with those four passes. And pin three, I wanna get down to 320, and I'm down there already with the, actually, I'm a bit low on that, so. Hopefully, pin three is either not a, um, a one cut, because I'm a little bit below the one cut. Otherwise, I can jiggle the key a little bit to get that one to lift up, hopefully. Uh, so you definitely want to be careful there. I do seem to be tracking off of my centers here. Uh, I'm a little bit left of the center there, so I'm going to want to push that. Well, I keep saying left, but I'm a little bit down from the from the center cut, so I want to migrate that up. I got five back on track. Four is a little bit down from there, so I want to migrate back on track upward, right? Um, I'm going to... There's some file marks on number one, so I'm going to... I'm going to lightly brush this on there like that and use this as my sandpaper to get rid of some of those marks. Okay. Go for, I think this is impression number four. And right now, I should probably get a pencil because I'm memorizing what cut I'm currently at. But that's going to get hard pretty soon, right? To, to memorize where I'm at the cuts. I could always just measure again with the, um, with the caliper to find where I'm at though. Okay. Let's uh, see again here. We've got, uh, what do we got? Okay, we got a mark on three again, for sure. And, okay, we'll go with the mark on three, okay? And it's funny, the mark on three doesn't look like it's in line with where my mark is, so, hmm. What I mean by that is my mark on three seems to be right in the valley of the cut, not in line with where my center line is marked on the key, uh, this black mark I put on there. So it's in the valley rather than on that. Um, so that's uh, interesting. Anyways, I'll take that down a little bit. I'm going to try to get back to that center line a little bit. Okay. So number three was at, I think it was at 320, so I'm trying to get to 305 with number three. I'm at 308. I'll just take one more little pass and see where I'm at. I'm at 307. So that little pass took off 10 thousandths. So if that took off 10, hopefully that took off 20. Okay. We're at, oh, okay, we're at 304. All right, so off by um, ten thousandths. It should be okay with intolerance um, or not because there's only 15 thousandths between cuts. But, you know, maybe there's a lack of uh, caliper ac accuracy. I'm really hoping I get a working key. I am rushing the process a lot more than I normally would be, but that's just so that the video isn't five hours long. Not that it takes five hours to impression a key. Some people can do this in like five minutes, which I think is pretty nuts. I cannot. Um, I'm waiting for the, the magnifier to come in focus as if it's a camera. Alright, I think I see a mark on 4 and 3. Okay, um, I'm going to pause the video briefly, um, check on the kids, and let the camera, hook, you know, um, not fill up. I'll be back. Okay, I grabbed myself some water. It is really hot out here. Um, so we'll go ahead and continue on this. Um, if you were using the, um, the tool, this thing, you can just go ahead and, you know, just keep checking your, your depths. So I'm at a, a, about a two cut with pin five. I'm at a two cut with pin four, two cut with pin three, and then the other ones I haven't touched, so they're both still at zero cut. Okay, so let's continue. Um, I had just impressioned it and was about to file again, but you know, it doesn't hurt to do more, so I'm gonna impression it again, because I don't think I had a very good view. Uh, this guy, he's got five teeth, we know of. He must be hurting his teeth by now. All right, let's see what we got. We've got, uh, what do we got? We got a mark on five, a really big mark on five. We got a mark on four. 
looks like I can see I, I start seeing faint marks on the other ones um, but nothing where I would take action yet so five and four in any case I see marks so I'm gonna give them some high pressure cuts and then I'm gonna make it softer to get rid of the uh, file marks and use it more like a sander towards the end there get softer and then I'll get um, less sand marks all right so number four we're currently at 2955 and we're trying to get to 290 for the next uh, and we're at we're at 291 so 291 and what did I say the other one was 29 295 and I want to get them both down to 290 so I gotta take a just a little bit from this last guy, and I wanna take a little bit more from this guy. I'm gonna get the little edges here so that if there's any burrs, they're not messing with my measurement and making me so 2915, so that needs a little bit more, and 2890. So I cut too much off of number five. Hopefully that's uh, not an issue. Take a little bit more from number four. Right. Ooh, okay, maybe I. Oh, he looks okay. 2895, it should be fine. Alright, let's go some more. Yeah, I got some little. Get get the little brass off of there so you're not dusting up the inside of your lock. Let's continue. I'll go in and out, up and down after rotating. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, I'm starting to see a mark on two. I see a mark on five. I think I see a mark on four, but I'm not sure. All right, so two and five, we'll do that. So two, he's on a uh, zero cut right now, so we gotta get him down to one cut. And five, right? Okay, let's see what we're at. So number two, we dropped it down to three. Where are we at? We're at a, a three. Yeah, oh, maybe I took too much off of number two because we're down to 3185 and I think one cuts to three two unless I hit it before. And I'm trying to get down to 305. I don't know. I lost count. Um, that's why I should be writing this down because of the way I'm doing it. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue. All right, 2785 on number five. Uh, normally, this wouldn't be an issue because um, you would only be taking like one or two swipes and you wouldn't be going off of measurements. And if you have a really worn out lock, you'll end up with a really custom key for that lock at um, heights that are not standard, right? Because those pins are worn away and your, your key will be a little bit taller than the standard measurements, but it'll work beautifully for that particular lock that you impressioned it for. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and impression again. So even if I didn't get down to the right depths, because I'm impressioning, it's going to tell me, you know, that I need to go down more. And I think that I'm having a hard time with impressions because this lock is wiggling in here but you might encounter a lock like that where it's just wiggling or it's in a padlock or something like that so it's a bit realistic um, all right got an impression on three and I'm starting to see more on one all right let's go with three at least and um, so for number three, I think, well, let's see what we're at right now. Where's my, oh, here it is. Number three, we're at about 3.06. So we're at a two cut. We want to get down to 2.9 for a three cut. So we're at 
targeting 2.9. Bet you I took too much off. 2.96, okay. Six drop down to two nine zero. Very good, perfect. Um, and then I forget the one, other one that I said I saw something on. Almost just dropped my phone off the railing there. That's got my GoPro monitor on it. I'm gonna take a little bit of the burrs off the edges like this. Um, you can see my peak is getting a little bit high there. That could interfere with uh, inserting and removing the key. Uh, I don't think it's an issue yet, but in any case, you can just take your, your flat file and, oh man, this flat file is hot in the sun. Take down those peaks. Just like that. Now, you got a nicer key. It's not going to wear down the pins as much, and it'll go in and out easier. All right. Turn left. Impression turn right. Impression left. Okay, there we go. Let's see what we got. What do I see? What are you showing? All right, I see a, a mark on four. I saw a mark somewhere else before, but I'm not seeing. Oh, two. I see a mark on two. Four and two. And maybe something's starting to show up on five, but I'll start with four and two. So four. I am currently at 290. I want to get down to 275. And 2, I'm at 320. And I want to get to 305. All right, I want to get to 305 on 2. I'll we'll start with that. Oh, yeah, it sounds beautiful. I can't do this when my wife or daughter are around. They'll go crazy. Uh, 308, a little bit more. Now, normally this obviously would go a little bit faster because you wouldn't be talking and working with wild angles. All right, so that's good on pin two, pin four. Pin four, we are at uh, 279, well, I'm gonna get down to 275, oops, sorry. Just a little bit more, right? Pin four, we are at two seven six. Maybe one a little pass like that. We are at two seven five. Okay. Go back to the impressioning board. Okay. I go left and right, maybe about three times each. Get a nice uh, impression on there. And let's see what we got. We have, uh, looks like a mark on four. I think, yeah, I see a mark on five and four. So five and four, I see marks. Um, why didn't I grab a pencil when I went in before? I'm trying to look at, so I have the, um, the reference sheet here off to the side, and I'm trying to look at, uh, the number and trying to remember where I was at. So, pin five, I'm at 276, all right, 275, so that must have been a four cut that I'm at on that one. And the other one's at 275, which must have been four cut. So I want to get these both down to 26. Both of these I want to get down to 260. Heavy at the start, go lighter until I'm barely brushing it at the end just to kind of use it as sandpaper. Um, what am I going for? I'm going for 26, 260 thousandths, 265, and 266, so they need a little bit more. Not much. The file takes off a lot more than you think. 26. Three, two, six, zero. Oh. So this one I need to take a little bit more. And you want to make sure you're obviously perpendicular to the key because if you have a slope, uh, it could mess with things. Two, six, zero. Oh. Okay. So those are both down to a five cut. Okay. So let's uh, try 
try this again. Have. Oh, hold the magnifier around the right way. The key doesn't look at need, the key doesn't need to look at my magnified eyeball. Um, what we got? I am having a hard time seeing anything. Oh, I got a mark on five. And a mark on three. It looks like. Mark on five and a mark on three by the look of it. Um, let's look at our chart. We've got to measure number three. Sorry, I'm also measuring stuff on off camera in my lap. Um, we're at about two nine on three. So that's a three cut. We're at a three cut on number three about. Um, And we want to get that down to 275. Alright, so let's get 275. I forget what the other one I saw a mark on. I want to get this guy down to about 275. 281. Okay, I think I went a little bit harsh on that. <laughs> I think I took off too much. 27. Six five, okay. I guess I got lucky. Do a little bit more like that. All right, that looks good. Um, I forget what pin I said the other one is on, so just go back to this guy. Definitely paper and pencil. I have the paper. So I don't have the pencil. Would be good. Would make things faster. Um, see a mark at five. I think I see one at two as well. At five and two. All right, let's measure what we're at two. I have this off the side, and I'm just measuring where I'm at on two. It looks like two, I only got down to a, a two cut on two. So I want to get number two down. More. I think it's a two cut. Let me measure it with a caliper. Um, keep picking up that SC4 key. Um, number two is at 306. So we're, oh, it's a little bit high for a two cut. Maybe I'll just take it down to a two cut. And in five, in five, it looks like I'm at. A five cut, so I want to take that down to a six cut. So two, four, five. I'm only going to take a little bit off two. Take that mark off. Um, see if I get the mark again. It was very faint. And number five, I want to take down more. Okay, so number five, we are down to. Um, I think I'm going to for two, four, five. What am I down to? Two, five, one. I need to get down to 245. Okay, I did pretty light motions there, so hopefully it didn't take off too much. 245, okay. We're getting pretty lucky. So I'm going to go ahead and um, grab the kids some food, and then I'll be back uh, after that. So give a pause. Okay, we're back from lunch. Um, camera angle might have changed a little bit. I took the stuff inside while we were out, um, well, while we were in the kitchen. Uh, I measured the key. We are currently at a 12446. Go ahead and continue where we left off. Get some impressions on there. This is going to be a long video. All right, where are we? Okay. Let's see. So I see my mark on two, and I see mark on five, two and five. All right, let's take two and five down some. So two, oh my gosh, I left the file in the sun. It is so hot. Let me bring the other file out of the sun here. 
Oh man, I don't know if I can use this. This is burning hot. Alright. Number two. Ow. And number five. Okay. So, number two, we want to get this down to 290. We're at 296, so we got to take that down a lot more. And number five, we want to get this down to 230. We're at 235. Okay. So let's take that down some more. Okay, let's see where we're at. Number five, we are looking for 230. We're at 234, so I think just a little bit more. Number two. We're looking for what? Uh, 290. We're at 291.5. So both of them need about 15th or 15 thousandths. So just they okay, might just be birds even. Barely, barely scraping to take away those birds. Okay, number five. What are we at? 232. We're aiming for 230. Number two, we're at 290. So that looks good for number two. This one will be a little bit more. Check him again. Now normally you could just impression in between. I keep saying this, I know, but I want to make sure you guys know. I'm going for 230. I'm at 231.5. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and get this file out of the sun. I got some high peaks again. I don't know where focus is, but high peaks again out of that. So I'm going to take down some of my, my peaks again with a flat file. Make sure there's nothing too crazy going on. edges of it too. Alright, there's our key. Let's go in for another impressioning. I should have keyed this up with really high cuts so that it'd be less filing, but you know. I just picked one that I had laying around. So whatever cuts it has is what it has. Uh, what am I seeing? See something on four, I think. See something on four. Okay, so we're gonna go after four, and um, four. Uh, okay. okay, took the file out of the sun. So um, four, we are currently at about. 260, so that is a 4 cut on 4. So let's take it down to 5 cut, which would be a 260. What did I just say? I just said 2. Yeah, I did just say 260, didn't I? For 260, which is a 5 cut, we want to take it down to a 6 cut, which is 245 on number 4. 245 on number 4. Get lighter towards the end. Four five, no, two five five five. Another a little bit off of that guy. Two what are we going for? I'm going for two four five or two five two. Now the one thing is that I'm going for measured cuts. And all right, that looks good. Two four, uh, a little bit short of two four five. Um, I'm going for measured cuts on this to do this. There's a problem if that I'm not lined up right for my spacings. I could get my deepest part off of where the pin is. Let's say I get my deepest cut here, but the pin is actually well. It, I get my deepest cut here, but let's say the pin is actually here. Then my measured cut's not going to work, right? Um, but then I will see. An impression up there and I'll know I need a file anyways 
So regardless, I should end up with a working key. I just, it might not be on the, on the, the proper depths, right? All right, I'm putting a lot of pressure this time. So let's see. Um, what do I got? Oh. Maybe it's a different angle. Not seeing much. I might need to impression again. Because I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing an impression. So I'm just going to need to do it again. Get some nice in and out maybe, up and down. Alright, let's see if we got an impression this time. Uh... Okay, uh, I see something on number four. So we're gonna go after number four again. We were at, uh, I, I wanna say we were at a five cut, right? We were at a five cut. We wanna get down to a six cut, is that right? Or am I off? We were at two, four, five, which is already a six cut. We wanna get down to a seven cut, which is a two, three, oh. All right, so let's get him down to a two, three, oh. I'm going kind of light on these files, so that's why I did more strokes than usual. Two, three, six, five. We got a little bit of ways to go. Not too much though. It takes off a lot more than you think. Going for two, three, zero. Oh. What are we at? We're at two, three, one. I keep ending up sideways. Oh, we're, yeah, two, three, two, three, one. We'll just barely touch it. And we'll get rid of some of the burrs on the side, that might be it. Yeah, it looks like about 230. Or hard to say. Like if you if you get your thing angled, now I'm only at one point something, right? I mean point one something. So you gotta make sure that you're perpendicular and that says two three two, so a little bit more. Saying two, three, four, five. So that's way. Oh, okay, there we go. Two, three, oh. Gotta make sure I'm perp for perpendicular. Okay. I'm really hoping this key works after all this. Always a lot of work, you know? I haven't been seeing anything on. I'm just gonna run very lightly with it to clean up some of the file marks so I can start seeing stuff. Oh, get it all the way in there. Sides. Let's see where we got something. Come on, give me something. Uh, no. oh. I might be seeing something on number five. I'm going to clean that up a little. Clean it up a little. And then I'm going to go for another mark. So we might be getting close because the marks are getting kind of faint. Hard to detect. So a number of the keys are probably set. I mean, a number of the pins are probably set. So let's see. I'm thinking I see... Hard to say. I think I see number one, so let's go ahead and take one down. We haven't taken one down yet, have we? Maybe we did once, so I'm not sure. Okay, we'll go for number one. Okay, let's see where we're at with number one. I should have measured it before I started. Let's see what cut we're going after. We're at 3-2. 
Okay, so we got down to a one cut with that. Here's another shot. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, we're getting a nice mark on one now. Nice mark on one. Let's go ahead and hit that guy again. We're going for a 305, I think now. 312. 305. 308. Three oh five. Okay. Do this again. Yeah. So this is a long process. I feel like we might be getting close. I might have picked a really bad key with some deep cuts. I guess. I see a mark on one. Just on one, okay. Let's take it down again. What were we at? We were at 305. We need to get down to 290. What are we at? 296. We need to get all the way down to 299. Okay, I didn't take much off that time then. Where are we at? 293. So about the same thing that I just did. Okay, 290. Get it in there again. Make sure you're not putting side to side pressure, only rotation, so you don't snap the key like I did. Um, see what we got. Uh, we might be having a faint mark on five, but I, I still see one. I'm going to go after one again. One, we are at. I know. We want to take this to next one is 275. Number one, we are at 280. Take up a little bit of the burrs on the edges. Seven six. We want two seven five. So just a light little, barely, barely pressure. Two seven five five. Two seven five zero. Oh, okay. And we're getting a bit of a peak between one and two. So let's go ahead and take that down some. Make sure our key will work. We'll peak between four and five. Okay, back to seeing where we're at. Oh, okay, we just got a core turn. Look at that, core's turning, but it's uh, it's really tight, okay? So that I have, I'm gonna double check to make sure that these are all cut down to a specific, um, to the proper depth. See if any of them have to be cleaned up. All right, number five, we're at we're at uh, 2315, but he needs to be down to 230. Maybe that's why I saw the faint marks on number 5. I didn't check the rest yet, but let's, let's go ahead and get him down to the proper 230 depth. And the fact that it felt tight, it means that one of your cuts is too high. Um, if it was too low, uh, you could jiggle it and get it to open smoothly, right? It would catch at first and then it opened smooth, but because mine stayed tight throughout the rotation, 
that means that one of my cuts is too high. Um, maybe I was just measuring it wrong. 233 on number 4. That one's dropped down to 230 as well. Just giving a little file to the ones that seem high. 274, that one might be a little low on number 3. But if it's low again, jiggle. 29. One five on number two. Looks like the nearest one would be two nine oh two nine oh five. Okay, let me just give them a little, little off the top. And number one is at two seven five. That's right on the money. So <clears throat> now, if it gets stuck, it's not because of the height. It's because uh, some of my cuts might be off on the on the on the um. What is that called? On the spacing all right so my spacing from the bow might be off by a little bit so i'm catching stuff on the upper down slopes rather than right at the bottom of the valley right okay so it works a lot nicer now but it still feels kind of tight so there's work that can still be done um uh, i don't know if you can impression at this point i'm just gonna let me see i don't I think because it's working now, maybe we won't see anything. Eh, maybe we are seeing a little mark on 4 and 5. So let's go ahead and just... Now, you, you run the risk of making a key that no longer works, right? The more you take off. Like, now that I have a working key, I should probably stop at that point. And maybe coat... Oh, okay, it's getting a little smoother, so it's probably one of those. Let's go for four, 5. That still a little bit tight, so let's go for four. Let's see if that gets any. I don't think that made it any smoother going after five right then. Eh, it's a little tight, but it, it seems okay. Um. Anyways, we can. I'll, I'll I'll keep playing with it, but there we got we got a working key. You know, it it's a little tight, but may you know what? The key does rub on this outside wood right here. So maybe the tightness I feel is just that wood, because it right when you go in, no pressure to, to open it. Um, if I take my blank key, this is a six pin key, let's see does it wiggle, uh, it wiggles about the same amount, so maybe let's get to an open point. And it's kind of tight, I don't know if I can blame it on the wood or not. But in any case, we have a working key, it works really nice. So there's our key. The bidding turned out to be 43477, so the seven cuts took a lot of filing. Uh, you notice I took away some of the peaks. You can, um, now that you're finished up, you can go ahead and really get rid of your peaks if you want to cut down on the amount it wears down on the lock. Get rid of the burrs on the sides. All right. And then you got your working key. So anyways, that is uh, impression lock, and the reason I'm doing this outside is for uh, Lowell. Uh, I'll put description in the video. He had a picking a lock in the wild.